hey man all right so in this video i'm gonna be showing you all the basics of making builds i'm gonna be demonstrating what talents you should be taking all the time when making builds and how shrine works so yeah i'm also gonna be making a video tomorrow showing you a build for each attunement including attunement less if you want some ideas for builds that are really good for pvp so please do push up if you find this helpful and let's get right into the video Alright, first thing to take into account is the races. Don't forget to set your race before making your build since each race gives you plus 2 points in 2 of the 6 main attributes. For example, Etrian gives you plus 2 in agility and plus 2 in intelligence, Ajit 2 in willpower and 2 in charisma, so on and so forth. We always need to look into what oath we're gonna get. Every oath is viable with every build, except Fate Trimmer, that one is meant to not be that viable. Always take a look in the wiki page, which I will link below, because almost all oaths have requirements in order to be able to obtain them. For more and more, I would always recommend going Ardor, since Rhythm is not all that good, and you may choose to go Tasset if you want the Tasset dropkick move, which requires the Jushkarita Fistile as well. Take Tasset only if you want that move and if you're going any type of light weapon. You can use it even when you don't have your fists equipped. Origins don't really change your gameplay all that much, they just change how much EXP you get from your adventure. For Bells, you will need to see which one you like the most. The Blood Scourge, also known as Reaper, is mainly used for when you want to PvP and gank people and want a quick health pack once they get knocked. Shardbow and Payback can be used for damage as well as Sacred Field giving you a damage buff and yeah, there is a ton of Bells as well as support bells that you can take and if you want better mobility you can take teleportation or dimensional travel also known as kamui now for outfit i would recommend you choose black diver if you put willpower in your build and are going for a pvp build as well and another alternative is prophet's cloak if you're making a pve build it's more preferred if you make the Krishna tip delver as your final schematic though you may choose something else like dark steel plate for a start since it's a bit hard to make Another important mechanic while making builds is the Shrine of Order. This helps you put high investment points into an attribute and then divide the points to other attributes that you want in your final build. For example, if you put 50 points in Agility and 40 in Fortitude and 1 to any other attribute you want in the end, you Shrine of Order and all the points get divided to each attribute you have put one or more into. If you put above 50 points into an attribute and then Shrine it, then it will only drop by 25 points and the rest of the points will go to the rest of the stats equally. This does not apply to the elements though. Also a thing to note when you're making a shrine build, you cannot take an oath before making the shrine deal, since once you get an oath, it prevents you from using that specific shrine. So always make sure you have the requirements for your oath in your final points in your build. Last thing, if you don't get the talents or mantras for points that you have put pre-shrine, you can use the Shrine of Blasphemy located in the Hidden Village in Eresia, which gives you 3 powers instantly and 9 talent hands along with mantras, and you will also have to keep in mind that this shrine costs 5 knowledge, but when used you get some knowledge back since every time you power up you get knowledge back, so it will cost less than usual. Oh, and another thing, if you're gonna do Shrine of Order, you also need to make sure to have 10 knowledge with you in order to actually make the deal with the Shrine of Order. I have a couple of videos on how to get knowledge in the description below. Alright, so this first build will be based off of the Atonement Less option, which means that you start without magic and go on without using any. As you can see, this build uses Shrine of Order, since you can see the points in the back of the main build, and let me show you real quick how the stats were before we shrined. We put 50 fortitude for the to the finish talent, which is a card that gives you more tankiness. 65 agility for the top dancer and chip shot talent. You can read all these talents I'm saying right now later, when you go to the talents page and hover over the talent. And 40 intelligence for several other talents. And obviously one or more point to each attribute we want the shrine to divide our points on. By the way, if I left this at 2, it would not divide the points there, since the racial points don't count, so that means we still have to put one point there. Once we shrine, as you can see, our points are now equally divided, and we're gonna put 40 points on strength, and the rest will go into our weapon classes. Now, this build is a special case, you don't actually need to be doing this in every build, but since this build is based off of some crazy slots, the weapon points will be spread in order to reach the bell's maximum potential. 
we will put 75 in one of the weapon classes, since we're going to with the Silent Oath, which requires us to have no attunement, 40 in either agility or charisma, which in our case we'll put 40 agility, and it also needs 75 in any weapon class. For talents, there's the advanced, rare, and common, so what you should aim for is to take Condition Runner if you feel like your build is more viable on land, otherwise don't take it since it will lock you out from getting Fishman, which is essentially the same thing but on water instead. Good thing with this side by the way is it tells you if you take a talent what it locks you out from, and if you take a talent pre-shine it tells you if you're unavailable of getting it afterward. Anyway, so there is some must talents you should take when making a PvP build. For example, we have rare talents such as Blood Iron Spirit, which is pretty good because it gives 5 health. Speed Demon, if you don't take a weapon that gives bleed damage. Scuba Drowner is another free 5 health. Impervious Slumber prevents your time being knocked getting reset. And Neuroplasticity gives you a free mantra slot if you're going for a build that has more than 7 mantras at least. Kickoff is another really good talent since it prevents a lot of the fall damage you take. Endurance Runner is another amazing talent that prevents you from losing momentum while being at low health. You should always take health back and ether kit if you're using a lot of mantras. For example, a mage build. Now, from the miscellaneous category, you should always take Anxious Guard, Hardened Nerves, Polite Awakening, Replenishing Knockout, and possibly Spit Emission and Armor Conserver. And Blade Dancer is another really good talent if you're going for 25 agility, which you probably should go 25 agility for most of your builds. And yeah, this talent allows you to roll all the time so long as you hit your opponent. Now for mantras, there's no must for every single build. There is always going to be different mantras for each element, a two minutes as well. Which for that you're gonna have to wait until next video which I'm gonna post all the builds that I'm gonna be showcasing and they're gonna have monsters, talents and stats so you can know what monsters to take for each attunement. For the weapons as well, you will have to look into the wiki page to see what weapon you like the most and then make a build with it. By the way, I forgot to mention, please go Fortitude for every one of your builds. Without Fortitude, your build is super squishy and will probably die like really soon and will not have a lot of health. Because of this, it's also vital to take the Exoskeleton talent at 40 Fortitude. This talent just gives you free tankiness, which is really amazing. Also, I should mention the equipment you're gonna wear, like helmets and coats, boots, capes, and all that stuff. Aim for them to have physical armor as well as HP, so you can be extra tankier. As I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna drop all these builds in another video tomorrow, so drop us up to stay tuned for that as well. If you have any questions on build making, you can ask me in the comments, I respond to all of them. And yeah, thank you for all the support. Uh, also, apologize for not uploading these past few days. I'll get back to my upload schedule, and that is for sure. Please drop us up if you appreciated the video. And yeah, that's all for now. Peace.